are great. They're great for catching planted trout. They're also good for catching holdover rainbows, rainbows that have been in the lake for six months or even a year. But uh, another bait that I just can't live without is worms. These are good old dirty night crawlers out of a little, a little cup. Um, but you got to make them float off the bottom when you're fishing in a lake. Now these will catch planted fish, they'll catch holdover fish, and if you go up in the high Sierras or the high mountains, they'll also catch those big giant brown trout that have never seen a hatchery truck because it's a natural bait. One of the things I really like about worms is once you get them up and floating, they put off scent. Worms are something all fish are drawn to eat and they move. They constantly wriggle. They don't die right away. So it's got movement, it's got scent, it's got great taste, it's a substantial meal, and all that adds up to big trout. So let me show you how to, how to set one up. I've got a sliding sinker rig on here, just like I would fish with dough bait, um, with a fluorocarbon leader and a small octopus hook. But I've got my handy dandy worm blower. You can buy these at any sporting goods store. It's just a little bottle and it's got a little needle on it. If you want to get real high tech, go to uh, like an animal supply, farm supply store, and buy a syringe for treating animals. They work way better. The needle's way finer. They make a small hole and you can put a lot of air in quickly. But these work just great too. So this is the magic worm blower. So here's how it works. I'm gonna grab a night crawler. Sometimes I use whole worms, sometimes I use half a worm. Kind of let the fish tell you what, uh, what they want. That lid is not coming off there very easy. Okay, there we go. I didn't check these at the store. Hopefully there is indeed a worm. Oh, there is indeed a worm in the container. So there we go. Let me set these down. So a night crawler's got two ends. The head end is the dark pointy end. The tail end is the, um, is the flat lighter color end. I like to hook the worm right in the middle. I always start off with a whole worm. I'm always hoping to catch a big fish. Big, big bait, big fish. So I don't gob the worm up on the hook. I pass the hook through the worm one time. I kind of thread it on there. But there's a lot of exposed hook there. That's all I do. They aren't worried about the hook, they're looking at the worm. I take my worm blower and I insert this near the hook pointing towards the head end. The head is the toughest part of the worm, it holds the air better than the tail end. I insert it, I blow it up, and you can see the worm blow up. And I might go to the other end of the worm, put a little more air in there, and I'll even put a shot in the tail for good measure. Now be before you cast this out, you want to put it in the water oh yeah, and make sure it's going to float. But just, just from the looks of that, I can tell it's going to float with no problem. Now, being late March, the water's fairly warm. And uh, a worm injected with air is going to fish just fine. In the winter when it's really cold, if you really want to tip the odds in your favor, inject your worm with some Procure fish oil. Oil is lighter than water. It floats up. It'll float the worm just like air, but it puts out a lot of scent. And when the fish grabs the worm, he gets a, just a pure shot of flavor, and it really encourages lethargic fish to gobble that worm down. Wow.